What do psychologists mean by looking at different levels of analysis? Stay tuned. Psychology is the study of behavior. Psychologists want to understand behavior as fully as possible. But what does it mean to understand something? That's what this video is about how psychologists understand behavior, but it turns out that the answer to this question highlights how other fields of study overlap with psychology, such as biology, ecology, and sociology, by focusing on different levels of analysis. Let's start with the most obvious level for psychologists, the behavioral level. This refers to how behaviors are elicited and how they impact one another. For example, if someone tells a joke, another person might laugh. A kid might be more likely to engage in violent play if they've seen that play modeled by someone else before. If I use one drug, I may be more likely to try another drug. If someone makes a good YouTube video, you might be compelled to hit the like button, like and subscribe. So the behavioral level is probably the most studied level describing the contexts and the stimuli that make certain behaviors likely to happen. And this can give you a lot of information that allows you to make predictions about behavior. But like a kid who keeps asking why over and over after every answer you give, there's always a deeper level. So that's where the other levels come in. It's the matryoshka or nesting doll of understanding. Here's my chart of levels of analysis for psychologists. Now, there may be other levels that could be added to this list, but this is a generally agreed upon starting point. Below behavior, we have other levels of analysis like neuroanatomy, neurochemistry, and cell molecular level. After all, behavior is the result of a concert of brain function. The brain is made up of a collection of different organs and circuits that are interconnected in certain ways. And if you're studying behavior that results from these systems, you might want to understand how these systems work. These circuits communicate with each other through neurotransmitters and signaling systems, which is another layer. Open that doll and inside is the level of genes and molecules moving around and doing things. So let's take an example of fear conditioning or learned fears. I can train a mouse to fear a tone by pairing it with a brief electric shock. Now this is called fear conditioning. By pairing the tone and shock together, eventually the tone comes to elicit a change in behavior, freezing in the case of a mouse. We could explore this behavior at the behavioral level for a while. We could ask questions like, how long does the fear memory last? How is it impacted by larger shocks or louder tones? How does prior experience with fear conditioning impact the speed of learning? These are all questions at the behavioral level, but we can go deeper. How is it that the brain produces this behavior? We might find that a lesion of the amygdala, a small area involved in emotions, eliminates the fear. Studies have shown that there's a circuit from the thalamus, another brain area, to the amygdala that's important for fear. Studies like these help us track down the circuitry of fear, allowing us to understand fear conditioning at the level of neuroanatomy. These circuits communicate by using neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, opioids, and so on. We might then ask which neurotransmitters are acting between the individual cells in the circuit. What effect do they have on the next cell? Do they excite the cell or inhibit it? This is the neurochemical level. Finally, we know that the whole system is dependent upon tiny molecules inside the cell that operate, moving ions in and out of the cell, using energy. All of these are the product of genes that must be constantly unzipped and read and copied and re-zipped. This is the cell molecular level. As you go deeper and deeper, each of these levels becomes less directly related to behavior, but changes at any level can impact all the others and can affect behavior. For example, a number of genetic mutations have been shown to influence susceptibility to fear conditioning. There's even a field called behavioral genetics devoted to looking at how genes impact behavior. The chart goes in the other direction too. Behavior doesn't occur in a vacuum. Instead, it's nested inside an environment which may place demands on the organism. One might want to understand the behavior and its relationship to the environment. Indeed, there is a field called behavioral ecology that focuses on exactly this problem. 
Furthermore, the environment may have other organisms in it, which can create complex social cues and social dynamics that a sociologist might study. So a lot of this sounds like things that a biologist or a sociologist might study. What makes psychology different from these other fields? Well, it's because behavior is the target level. As a psychologist studying a specific behavior, I want to know all of the circuitry involved in this behavior. I want to know all of the environmental influences. I want to know all the genes that impact this behavior. Now contrast this with a geneticist that might be studying a target gene. Their target level is cell molecular. They want to know all the things that this gene does, how it impacts other signaling systems, and so on. They don't so much care about the other genes that influence a particular behavior. But here's why that's a good thing. No one person can be an expert in everything. The geneticist has tools and training that I, as a psychologist, need if I want to collect all of the puzzle pieces. Likewise, if I have expertise in behavior, that can help her find all the behaviors that are impacted by her gene. Same with the ecologist, the sociologist, or the anthropologist. We are better together. To sum up, behavior can be understood at many levels of analysis. For the psychologist, behavior is the target level. But understanding the behavior at all levels is important. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, consider subscribing to stay informed about all things psychology, and until next time, keep thinking.